Bonjour. Welcome. Bonjour. Uh, Nancy Lee was the female rep on the panel yesterday. I'm the French-Canadian rep at this conference. Um, thank you, Neil. Thank you to Stephen Thomas for sponsoring this, this session. I will read my uh, speech this morning because I have so many events and names to drop. I don't want to forget anybody, so you will excuse me for the formal aspect of my delivering this morning, but uh, I think it's important I don't miss anybody and uh, give credit to all of you that deserve it. So I would like to begin by thanking the conference organizers for inviting me uh, here today to talk about, uh, to you about the Canadian social marketing experience. Quite frankly, I'm very honored by this invitation. I'd like to welcome, uh, extend a warm welcome and bienvenue to the hundreds of international delegates, colleagues, and friends attending this conference. I hope you are enjoying your visit to Canada and that you'll have time to visit the country in three days, which is impossible. Um, on behalf of all Canadians, I thank Jeff French and the World Social Marketing Conference organizers for choosing Canada as the location for the third world conference. As you will see toward the end of my presentation, this decision is very timely indeed. Finding myself here in front of you to present the Canadian social marketing experience makes me feel like the Canadian flag bearer at the Olympics. It is very moving to see representatives from so many countries who have come here to Canada, along with so many great social marketers from all, all over the world who share a common passion. I am proud to carry the flag to show the world this group of well-trained, determined, and energetic Canadian achievers. So, some are seasoned gold medalists, while others hold world records. And there are many others who, although this may be their first Olympics, have already met international standards. I am very impressed by the number of Canadians attending this conference. It is encouraging and promising to see so many new faces on the Canadian scene. My presentation is organized around two main themes. I will begin by presenting a timeline of major Canadian achievements and contributions to date. I will then share with you what I think are the strengths, opportunities, and challenges currently facing the Canadian social marketing field. So for the next few minutes, I ask, I ask for your indulgence as I embark on some pretty serious hero worshipping and name dropping, not because I want to show off my list on LinkedIn, but because um, I feel that all major figures from Canada and around the world who have contributed so much to social marketing deserve to be recognized here today. I will start my dropping, by dropping the names of several Canadians who provided me with the valuable input for this presentation. Samir Deshpande, Andrea Donlin, Tania Drollinger, Kay Kazirer, Al Anne Levac, Judith Medill, Doug McKenzie Moore, Jim Minns, and Mark Sarner, many of whom are here. Can you raise your hands? Yes, thank you. As I present the timeline, I will draw historic parallels between some key international milestones and major Canadian achievements in the field. I would like to mention that this chronology of international milestones was adapted from the work of Audrey Robinson Menard, by the way, Menard is very French, uh, currently a doctoral student at the University of Huddersfield, UK, as well as from a list of seminal events and publications in Nancy Lee's and Philip Kotler's 2011 social marketing textbook. And let me state that this chronology is not meant to be a comprehensive review, just highlights. So where else could I begin but, but in 1971, the year the famous Cutler and Zaltman article was published? That same year, the National Health and Fitness Promotion Nonprofit Agency, Participation, was created in Canada. Participation is recognized as being the first and one of the greatest social marketing and health communication success stories. I was lucky enough to be involved with participation in the 80s and to work with Russ Kisby, who had an extraordinary impact on the field and on the lives of so many people here. Canada has also been a world leader in health promotion. As mentioned yesterday, in 1974, 
the internationally renowned Lalonde Report, and a French Canadian, uh, entitled New Perspective on the Health of Canadians and, and Love in Western Canada, of course. Uh, <laughs> Was, was published, uh, Marc Lalonde was the federal minister uh, at the time. The report stressed that a high quality healthcare system was only one component of a healthy public policy which should take into account human biology, lifestyle, and our physical, social, and economic environments. This report opened the door to the idea that governments should also be in the business of modifying behaviors and marketing social change. The 70s saw the emergence of early adopters. In the United States, they included Alan Andreessen, Bill Novelli, and Bill Smith. Bill Smith at the Academy for Educational Development, where so many great social marketers also emerged over the years, some of whom are now working at FHI 360. I should also mention PSIs as an early adopter of social marketing in the 70s. Early adopters in Canada included two leaders at participation, including Russ Kisby, as well as Keith McCarricker, too seldom mentioned as part of those stories. And obviously, Jim Mintz, as well as Health Canada, who most generously shared his passion and know-how. In the 80s, as the field was rapidly expanding, especially in the United States and Australia, participation in Health Canada continued to be the main users of social marketing theory and practices. Health Canada applied health communications and social marketing to a growing number of health issues, adopted innovative audience research techniques, as well as creative tactical approaches and entrepreneurial partnership initiatives, as we heard yesterday. As the field was celebrating its first 10 years in 1981, as captured in Bloom and Novelli's article, Health Canada was officially creating a social marketing unit and Manifest Communications was created. Manifest was the first true social marketing firm. It worked with participation in Health Canada, as well as with many provincial agencies and NGOs. I personally recall working closely with Mark Sarner, he's here, I'm glad he's here, Janice Nathanson and Andrea Donlin over the years, always meeting people with lots of creativity and entrepreneurship. In the 1980s, many other firms followed in their footsteps. Manifest and Health Canada organized one of the first Canadian social marketing conferences in 1983 called Marketing Ideas. In 1984, Mark Sarner published a landmark article, Marketing Health to Canadians. The same year, about a quarter of a century ahead of its time, Participation launched the Participation Network, which was intended to be a community of leaders and citizens interested in fitness networking using the communication methods of the time. Actually, that explained why I was recruited at the time. I spoke earlier about the Lalonde Report providing a framework for thinking about health promotion. Well, in 1986, the famous Ottawa Charter for Health Promotion was adopted. This charter continues to be a vital reference for health promotion that addresses the social determinants of health and is recognized to be the source of many community action initiatives and the settings approach, what social marketing would call upstream social marketing and place in the marketing mix. I am not suggesting that the Ottawa Charter was a uniquely Canadian product. The World Health Organization rallied the best minds from around the globe to develop the Ottawa Charter. But I can proudly say that many Canadians played an important role in it and that it happened to be officially adopted just a few kilometers from here. Late in the 1980s, a number of important publications were released in the field, including Lefebvre and Flora's article in Health Education Quarterly, the Kotler and Roberto textbook, and here in Canada, Eric Young, another great social change leader, published Social Marketing, Where It Has Come From, Where It's Going. Lots of things to say about Canadians, right? Um, the 1990s saw the continued expansion of social marketing worldwide, and Canada was a big part of that movement. It was the decade of new conferences. The 1991 Social Marketing and Public Health Conference in Florida, and the first Innovations in Social Marketing Conference in 1995. In Canada, the American Marketing Association Ottawa chapter held social marketing conferences. Social Marketing for Business conferences were organized by Manifest. 
The first Canadian public sector marketing conference, now called Markham, was held in 1998. Additional publications were made available that provided important foundations for the future of social marketing, including Andreessen, a Canadian, Marketing Social Change, and the Social Marketing Quarterly. I have to acknowledge certain people here. Those from the University of South Florida, Carol Bryant, uh, I have the greatest admiration for Carol, Jim Lindenberger, and Craig Lefebvre, who is obviously here as well, for launching the quarterly. I would also like to mention the current, that the current editors, Lynn Donor Lutenberg and John Strand, I'm a big fan of both of them, they are here today. In Canada, Sarner and Nathanson, Janice Nathanson, published Social Marketing for Business in 1996. Also, during that decade, the web began to be used for the dissemination of social marketing training and strategies. I worked on a social marketing tutorial on Health Canada's website at the time. In the 90s, the 90s were, was also the decade when many social marketing courses were introduced in various Canadian universities, Montreal, York, and Carleton, to name a few. And I'd like to acknowledge the many, the presence of University of Waterloo's students and the many people from here and volunteering for the conference, and we should <laughs> applaud them. Thank you. Back to the 90s, uh, the Center for Social Marketing was created at Carleton by Judith Medill and Jim Mintz in 1994. The Health Communication Unit at the University of Toronto was also created in the 90s under the leadership of Larry Hirschfield. In Canada, it was also during the 90s that fields related to the environment and sustainability began to embrace social marketing thanks to the high-profile leadership of Doug Mackenzie Moore and the accomplishment of Jay Kazerer. Doug published his first and second edi editions of Fostering Sustainable Behavior, developed the concept of community-based social marketing, and launched CBSM.com, while Jay launched the ToolsOfChange.com site. Both those sites are still going strong today. In 1999, the fifth Innovations in Social Marketing Conference was co-chaired by Bev Schwartz, Charles Weinberg, and myself, and was held in Montreal. In the early part of the 21st century, additional funding was made available for social marketing-related research. I have to say, and Jim Mintz said it yesterday, the budgets are cut drastically now, unfortunately. Uh, but about 10 years ago, social marketing was not, also, was not only being used at the national level, but increasingly by various provincial and community-based organizations. A good example of this trend is Saskatchewan in Motion, a provincial initiative to promote physical activity that was launched in 2003. Saskatchewan in Motion is represented here today by its general manager, Kathy Krasanowski. As major textbooks and resources were published in other countries, including CD Synergy, with the involvement of a number of leading social marketers, including Mike Newton Ward, uh, colleagues at the University of Ledbridge created the Center for Socially Responsible Marketing, Ledbridge, Alberta, I should mention, yes. <laughs> uh, the Center for Socially Responsible Marketing in 2001. The center team consists of the following accomplished researchers, Deborah and Mike Basil, Samir Deshpande, Tanya, Tanya Drollinger, and Walter Weimer. In 2004, the first SMART conference was held, SMART for Social Marketing Advances in Research and Theory, as well as the first Tools of Change webinar. In 2005, I'm getting there, in 2005, another center was created, the Center for, of Excellence for Public Sector Marketing, now playing an important role in the field with people like Bernie Coulterman, Jim Mintz, Mike Kujoski, and Claire Mills. I must also mention the creation of other important centers of excellence. Clearly, the National Social Marketing Center in the UK sent a great wave of energy around the world that was felt here in Canada. And I would like to acknowledge the brilliant contribution of the UK social marketing community, Jeff French in particular. The, this contribution was further illustrated by the first so, social mar World Social Marketing Conference held in Brighton in 2008. Three major publications from international colleagues were published in 2007. Hastings, Why Should the Devil Have All the Best Tunes? Siegel and Donor Lertonberg's Marketing Public Health, and Maybach and Collaborators' People and Places Framework. 
That same year, CDC held the first national conference on health communication, marketing, and media. Jay Bernard, who has played a major role in this initiative, is here with us today. In Canada, a number of publications provided the field with additional tools, including Lagarde's Lagarde, uh, Le Marketing Social, Sismarie Levac and Collaborators Model for Social Marketing, published in 2008. In 2009, the Lucie and André Chagnon Foundation, Canada's largest private foundation dedicated to the prevention of poverty with a focus on educational success in the province of Quebec and where I'm proud to work, launched a large-scale and long-term social marketing initiative to advance early childhood development. To complete the description of this decade, I must mention a failed attempt in 2004 and 2005 to form a Canadian social marketing association, but I will come back to that in a few minutes. In recent years, the International Social Marketing Association was formed, the Journal of Social Marketing was created, Australia and New Zealand showed a concerted and systematic effort in advancing social marketing, and the presses continued to publish excellent social marketing textbooks and cases. In Canada, the Canadian transportation community saw the publication of new social marketing guides specifically developed for that field. Jay Kazirer, Jeff Noxon, and I worked on a number of publications on behalf of the Federal Department of Transport, as well as the Transportation Association of Canada. In 2012, Quebec en forme, created through a partnership between the Quebec government and the Chagnon Foundation, launched a Wix campaign aimed at branding physical activity among tweens, a campaign that builds on the success of the Verb campaign in the United States. And here we all are together in Toronto for the third World Social Marketing Conference. I'm not finished. <clears throat> Now I will move on to look at the current strengths and opportunities of the Canadian social marketing field, as well as the challenges it faces. I guess I could say in all humility, I'm Canadian after all, that the review I just presented gave, gave us all a pretty clear idea of our strengths and opportunities. We have an impressive track record and know-how. There has been a widespread application of social marketing in many fields and at all levels. There are excellent hubs of expertise. Training is available and of high quality, and there is a demand for effective interventions to deal with serious health, social, and environmental problems. But like many other countries, we are also faced with significant challenges. Lack of shared understanding of what social marketing is, lack of senior decision makers' understanding and support for it, social marketing training is not being systematic, there are few full-time social marketing positions or initiatives that show a sustained use of social marketing to achieve long-term change. There is insufficient audience research, targeting, and evaluation. There is a need for more complementarity and integration of social marketing with policy and community mobilization work. There is a lack of sustained funding and there are significant cuts in communications and social marketing, especially at the federal level. In, re in general, requests for a proposal do not systematically require social marketing expertise and experience. And there is clearly a need for a collective social marketing voice and ongoing networking within the field in Canada. In short, as Andrea Donlan mentioned to me, we have the opportunity to revitalize the power and potential of social marketing as the tool for social change. If our field is to continue, it's an amazing story. However, we need to do some serious collective thinking about revitalization. I don't want to sound negative this morning, but I'm, it's a wake-up call. Let me return for a moment to the failed attempt at forming a Canadian Social Marketing Association. Here's the text from a 2005 CSMA uh, yes, draft flyer, and let me read it. The Canadian Social Marketing Association is a new national organization for leaders and professionals associated with the support and practice of social marketing. Who, who in the room were involved in drafting this, by the way? Okay, good. You will remember this. The objectives of the association's 
are to advocate for the recognition, understanding, and practice of social marketing, to form an alliance with existing marketing and social marketing organizations in order to expand the knowledge and support of social marketing, to document, recognize, share, and publish Canadian social marketing research and practices, to promote social marketing to the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. Well, those words don't seem dated to me. Maybe they could be a starting point for revitalization. Why not a Canadian chapter of the International Social Marketing Association or part of a North American chapter? In other words, the message I want to send to my fellow Canadians is that the future is now. The success of that future will depend on our collective will, not just individual breakthroughs. In closing, I once again thank the conference organizers for giving me this opportunity and honor to celebrate the truly remarkable story, history of social marketing in Canada. I hope I have helped to set the stage for reigniting a collective will to see Canada continue to make a vibrant contribution to the field, and more important, to take up some of the most pressing social health and ecological challenges in history. Thank you, merci. So we have a few minutes, uh, so perhaps uh, Francois could take a couple of questions, if there are any. Put your hand up, and we have a microphone that we can bring to you. Anyone else? Thank you. Okay, good. My name's Mike Hope. I'm from Social Marketing Gateway in the UK. Um, picked up on your, your need that you identified for social marketing to refresh itself, sort of re-energize itself. So I'll ask the obvious question, any ideas on how we do that? Um, I think within the field, especially if I'm going to talk for a second about Canada and then in general, I think in Canada, uh, I, I mentioned at the end of my presentation that I really think that we should form some kind of a collective means. I don't want to say association, I don't, I don't really care. But I think uh, we're going to, you know, people like Jim Mintz and Mark Sarner, who are in the room, and many others in the room, uh, manage to create opportunities for the field to get together. And we're missing that. And we need to, rather than relying on individual great breakthroughs and great accomplishments, uh, I think we need some collective effort to make social marketing really recognized for what it has to offer. And it's true in Canada and in the world. And I was very uh, impressed by the work that was is being done with the International Social Marketing Association last night. We got reported, so we need this. Uh, on another level, I, I think that social marketing needs to make the message really clear and not too academic and not too complex about what it has to offer and how it connects or and integrate with uh, things like community mobilization, policy work. I was saying to, to people, that as part of my work, social marketing provides me probably 70% of the angle I need to have for social change. I need the extra 30, and I need to be good at working very with agility with all kinds of other social change approaches, as Philip Cutler presented yesterday. So we need to be agile, we need to be strong, we need to be together. Thank you. Question right there. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Devine from the World Bank. I used to be at PSI, so I've been okay. working in social marketing for 18 years. Félicitations, Francois. Merci. Um, a little confrontational. I, I'm trying to think what I'm going to write in my back to the office trip report when I get back to DC. And there's a lot of red flags for me during this conference. What you just said, why are the RFPs not mentioning social marketing yesterday, the social versus marketing debate. And I'm wondering if we as a group are not becoming a little marketing myopic ourselves. We're working on, you know, protecting our brand, which was the discourse from Brighton four years ago. And in the meantime, there's a lot of tracks out there. People, the behavioral economists that are getting a lot of traction. Behavior, uh, uh, energy, and climate change has its own conference. IDEO, which works on design, environmental design, is not here at the conference. So there's a lot of tracks on them. We're failing to integrate, we're failing to learn from each other. We're for, you know, failing to have a wider knowledge, knowledge exchange. So I'm just wondering, thinking ahead, you know, how do we deal with that? There are big problems out there, and marketing has the power to bring scale. 
but somehow we're not getting that message across. So a bit of a comment and a, a, yeah. a question to you. I accept your comment. Uh, and the, the only thing I will add is I've been a consultant for 21 years, and I can declare officially that clients really don't care about this discussion. You know, they want to get help to see change happen. I think we're offering part of the answer. We need to be good at being part of the answer and be very much involved with other people's perspective on how to achieve change. We, we've been really smart over the years in integrating and just the upstream type of integration over the years is a good example of, for me of this field capacity to adjust and add to and integrate. Uh, and we need to stay, I think, relatively flexible, very strong, have a good foundation, as Alan Andreessen said, we need to, to continue, but uh, things will change. I mean, we're, we're the promoter of change. We need to be receptive to change. Thank you. One more question over here. Th thank you very much, Francois, for a great review and for bringing to the surface the idea that we do need to have in North America and in Canada some association representing social marketing. And I just wanted to say there have been a few names that have been put forward to the International Social Marketing Association already, people who are interested in um, forming an association. And so uh, I don't know if you want to take names as well, but we certainly are taking names. So if anyone in the room is interested in Jake. a North American and a Canadian or a United States chapter, uh, please put your name in through the, you can just our sign up list in the ISMA booth or, or tell Francois. Uh, or me, or any of us, and uh, we'll put you all together, and hopefully we'll make it happen. Thank you, Jake. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Francois. You. Thank you.